One of the big focuses of adult figure collecting is getting figures we had as a kid updated or even reissued. Sometimes it's about getting modern interpretations of the characters like Super 7 does with their ultimates, where we have lots of articulation, lots of deco, lots of accessories, just lots of lots of. And Super 7 does this very well. Big companies like Hasbro and Mattel do this as well. And sometimes these recreations range from exact reproductions of toys we had as kids, like what Hasbro does with the retro Star Wars line. I mean, honestly, I'm really excited to finally get a new Obi-Wan because, man, my old Obi-Wan lost his cape and lost his lightsaber years and years ago and he's all beat up. So I'm kind of excited to actually be able to get a new version of a figure I had as a child. Other toy companies are even sort of looking at what IP they own, like Mattel with Street Sharks and saying, hey, what if we bring this one back? There may not be, you know, a giant fan community, but bringing it back could reignite that. I honestly think it's really cool that Bill Beneke and Anton, who are two people that I work with at Mattel, spearheaded this and actually looked into lost figures that never got produced in the original line and are bringing them back kind of Super 7 style as ultimate figures with articulation and accessories and colorful packaging. The point is, this trend is all about bringing back toys that we loved as children and finding ways for us as adults to have that acquisition, that, that feeling of accomplishment, because we can get them. Now, one line that has come up a lot, and I mean a lot, as far as being asked for reissues or to bring back, is Mask. And there's some pretty big reasons why this line has struggled to come back. It was definitely a favorite of mine when I was a kid. If you're not familiar with Mask, it was about a group of heroes and villains that put on masks, and that gave them the ability to transform their vehicles from ordinary earthbound vehicles into cool sci-fi things like flying cars and flying motorcycles, and, well, it was all sort of a two-in-one. Every vehicle had two forms. It's kind of like Transformers, but without the robot. So why has Mask not come back? Well, one, obviously, there's the huge amount of tooling with the vehicles, but you could just focus on smaller items. I mean, there were obviously mask items that were not gigantic, although I don't think anyone is really waiting on pins and knees to get this guy again. But yeah, some of those big vehicles that had giant, you know, spaceships that shot out of them, a little tough to do. Individual figures? Maybe not. And this did make a brief comeback. So a few years ago, well, actually almost a decade ago, Hasbro brought Matt Tracker, the main hero for Mask, back as a fully articulated 3 and 3 4 G.I. Joe. Here you can see him compared with his previous smaller figure from the 80s. It was a really cool figure, but it turned out to be a one-off. We were all kind of hoping that maybe this would lead to a reemergence of Mask, and the figure boasted that Mask was now a division of G.I. Joe. So this was actually part of a much larger project, and there were plans, there were big plans for this. But they never happened. And that was what a lot of collectors were left hanging, saying, well, wait a minute, you did a mask figure in G.I. Joe, you set up the concept of, of mask being a division of G.I. Joe, and we could get tons of these characters, and maybe, possibly, even vehicles. So really the question is, why didn't this happen? Why can't we, if we can't get the vehicles, alone because they're so expensive to tool, can we at least get figures? Well, it all goes back to the Unite comic that Hasbro put out at San Diego Comic-Con almost a decade ago. This was part of a larger program where they were going to create a Hasbro shared universe between all of the brands they own. Basically very similar to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, the idea that Captain America and Iron Man could be in a movie together at the time when it came out was mind-blowing, and then Thor shows up, and Black Widow, and Hulk, and nowadays in Infinity War, when Doctor Strange shows up to talk to Iron Man, it's kind of like, okay, yeah, that's the usual thing. It's, it's par for the course. And many studios wanted to copy this formula because, well, there was a lot of money to be had. Unfortunately, other attempts, such as Universal's Dark Universe, even though they came out with some star-studded photography and one movie, it never happened because that one movie just didn't take off. So the same thing kind of happened with Hasbro's shared universe plans. They had a lot of work developed, but like a lot of projects, it just never got off the ground for a lot of reasons. Now, Hasbro's no stranger to doing shared universes or at least crossovers. They've done G.I. Joe and Transformers many times between comic books and actual toy executions. 
usually based on nostalgia from when they, you know, met in the 1980s, and usually released to adult collectors at things like San Diego Comic-Con. Now, all of this really got kicked off with the Unite comic book, where Hasbro stepped out and said, hey, we're going to create this awesome shared universe. And they even put out an action figure set that had characters from Mask and Rom and G.I. Joe all together in one set. And this was meant to be the precursor of what was going to be a much, much larger project where we would learn that all of the homegrown properties that Hasbro owned, and it's quite a lot, they actually own a lot more properties than, say, a Mattel or a Spin Master, although Spin Master does have Paw Patrol, much like Marvel had their huge slate of movies that were plotted out and planned almost 10 years in advance, and now they probably have them plotted out 20 years in advance, I mean... Well, when they made Iron Man, they didn't know it was going to turn into this, but it did. The idea was, much like Nick Fury brought together the whole Marvel Universe, Synergy from Gem. You remember Synergy, right? Well, Synergy was going to be the force that brought everybody together and united the Hasbro Universe. So they had a movie slate ready, and it was going to be huge. In fact, they actually had phases. They had phase one, Assemble, where we would have gotten to meet all the characters. Phase two, Darkness, well, where, you know, everything goes to shit. Phase three, Unicron, where, well, you know, Unicron comes along. And phase four, Crisis War, and then Inhumanoids. It was a whole giant shared universe, and it would have included a mask movie and a huge relaunch of the property. So, why didn't this happen? Why were we denied mask? Part of it is because recent Hasbro movies, like Gem and some of the later G.I. Joe movies, shall we say, failed to meet expectations, and the idea of using even G.I. Joe to set up more of these movies kind of got sidelined. But really what it was about was cannibalization. There were a few high-ups at Hasbro, whose name shall be uh, <laughs> held in confidence at the moment, who felt that G.I. Joe and Mask competed with each other. And putting out two properties that were identical, basically characters and vehicles for war, well, Mask was deliberately buried. There's only so much room in the toy aisle, and all toy companies have to focus on at least what their priorities are in order to maximize the amount of real estate at retail that they can claim. And it was felt that it was much better to put all of the apples in the G.I. Joe basket, if you will, than to try to divide them and get Mask and G.I. Joe and Inhumans and ROM, etc., etc., all retail ready. So while it would have been really cool to see this shared universe and Mask would have been a big part of it, Unfortunately, with the failure of several movies and many other, well, just sort of loose strings, it kind of got chucked up to what could have been. It would have been great to see a Hasbro shared universe, and honestly, in particular, it would have been great because Mask would have been part of this. So, do you miss these plans? Do you wish they actually came to fruition? Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts on what could have been more Mask in a Hasbro shared universe. But instead, we got Snake Eyes. Well... Que sera, sera. At least that My Little Pony movie wasn't too bad.